Stray is one of those games that I personally really enjoy. I enjoy playing it. I enjoy watching others play it. It's a good time, but I don't think I can recommend it. And more specifically, I don't think I can recommend that you pay for it. At the time of writing this script for the video, you can get access to the game for free through the PlayStation Plus free trial. So it is possible to play it for free. If you have access to that, I recommend you do so. Otherwise, I would hold off. And because the game is so simple and short, you're going to be able to get through it in a single evening. So you can finish it cancel the free trial of PlayStation Plus if you don't already have it and move on with your day. However, for everybody else, specifically those who are not playing on PlayStation for free, I just can't recommend that you spend $30 on this game. And over the course of this video, I'm going to explain to you in excruciating detail why that is the case. Agree to disagree or agree with me wholeheartedly. It's up to you. All I ask is that you hear me out and consider what I have to say. Now, we played this over on stream on Twitch, which I highly recommend that you check out because I make sure that I'm live whenever these new videos go up. So once this video is over, assuming you are watching on the day of release or close to it, come by and say hello. I would love to see you. I'll have all of the links in the link tree that's in the description box below the like button. Now, I didn't know much about Stray before starting it, other than that you play as a cat who is astray and that there were some really interesting robotic characters in a cyberpunk world that were relatively compelling, at least from what I saw in the trailers. There had also been some drama before the game's launch about its length, with a select few reviewers calling it out and criticizing it for presenting only three to five hours of gameplay while still charging $30. And yes, I know, before anybody says it, Stray was put on sale before it even came out over on Steam. It was regularly 10 to 15% off before the game even launched. So it seems like the publisher Annapurna was relatively concerned with the perception of price to gameplay quantity, which is why they were putting it on sale even before the game came out, just to nip that in the bud. But to explain from my perspective what I think of the length of the story, I don't think it's inherently ridiculous to charge $30 for three to five hours of entertainment. Hell, if you go out to the movies and get a drink afterwards, you're probably well beyond spending $30 for that entertainment that would last you about the same length of time. Sure, this is a video game, so we are getting digital entertainment as opposed to physical goods for our money, like a beer, but in my opinion, the comparison makes sense in broad strokes. If I'm willing to entertain myself for $30 at the movies, why shouldn't I have the same standard here? So having said all of that, I personally don't really have a problem was spending 30 bucks for a few hours of my time as long as those few hours are engaging and worthwhile. But that does not mean that Stray hits that qualitative mark. All of this to say there are some mitigating circumstances with regards to Stray that really compound the issue of gameplay length to variability to replayability. All of it just gets worse the more you look at Stray. Now, beyond all of this, the only other thing I knew about the game was that critics in general seemed to really love the game. Stray received nines and tens from more reviewers than you could shake a lucky cat's foot at, and it seemed as though this studio had delivered on what was promised, a dystopian cyberpunk game where you play as a cat. And based on that description, what could I possibly have a problem with? Well, a couple of things. For one, the game is incredibly easy, and secondly, it is so insanely mindless that you don't have to think about what you're doing even as you navigate puzzles, rough terrain, and vague story objectives. Now, I do plan to show you specific examples of each of these things as the video progresses, so be warned, there's going to be spoilers. To be clear, I'll be showing clips from the entire game, and because the game is so extremely short, it's very difficult to avoid spoilers of any kind. So instead, we're just going to spoil absolutely everything. So consider yourself warned. I also want to say that I arrived at my conclusion with regards to Stray that you shouldn't buy it, but instead only play it if you can get it at a deep, deep sale or for free after a lot of consideration. And I've gone back and forth on my conclusion a few times. Overall, I liked my time with Stray as short as it was, but your experience with the game will be no different if you watch a streamer or a YouTuber play it versus just playing it yourself. And whenever that's the case with a video game, I just don't think I can recommend that you pay money for it unless it really calls to you, which may be the fact that it features a feline protagonist is that calling. 
that's up to you. Just understand that my current stance is that if you can get this game for free, it's worth a casual playthrough on a Friday night. But if your only option is to buy it on Steam for 30 bucks, I think your money would be much better spent on a game like Dinkum or Hellblade or even Plague Tale Innocence, which is getting a sequel in the next couple months. But with that, we're going to get into the nitty gritty details. I'll have timestamps below so you can jump around, blah, 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 you know the drill. But first, I do need to say thank you to our sponsor, Factor. Factor allows you to get fresh, ready-made meals delivered straight to your doorstep. Factor's chef-created meals are fresh, never frozen, and they're designed by dietitians to ensure that every meal is packed with premium, science-backed nutritional quality. No more meal prep, no more dishes, no more unhealthy fast food. Factor makes it all easy and delicious. They actually send me a week of meals to try along with a bunch of smoothies to enjoy on the side, and I've got to say I'm pretty impressed. Me and my wife Nikki have been loving it, and if you follow me over on Twitch, you've probably seen me eating some of these meals throughout the week as we streamed. They're extremely convenient, they are delicious, and to make it all better, they're healthy. Check out Factor by using my link in the description box or in the pinned comment, or you can go to go.factor75.com and use promo code POGLUKES130 for $130 off across six boxes. Again, that's promo code POGLUKES130. 130. Check them out today. Okay, and with that, let's jump camera angles and get into it. Oh, hey, hi, how'd you get over there? That's crazy. Good to see you. Also, I apologize if you hear random screams. You might have heard that one. My son Lachlan is up playing with his mom, Nikki, and uh, they're making loud noises. He's just screaming <laughs> like fun screams, not bad screams. He, he just, yeah, he's loud. <laughs> Now you see, the basic gameplay loop of Stray is comprised of running around levels, jumping up to different surfaces, and occasionally speaking to NPCs. Though the term speaking is generous because our titular feline friend doesn't ever say anything themselves, and in many cases, you'll just act as a courier between two NPCs solving their problems for them as you progress through the story. And speaking of the story, it's pretty straightforward. You are a stray cat wandering through a post-apocalyptic world. About five minutes into the game, you fall away from your pack of cats and find yourself in a dystopian underground city. And the objective of the game is pretty simple get out. Over the course of your journey, you'll meet this little android friend who gives you access to an inventory and a means of communication between NPCs and yourself. And you'll meet a lot of NPCs and robots that have their own quirky personalities and things that they need. You help them, they help you, and eventually, at the very end of the game, you're able to lift the roof off of this entire underground city, allowing everybody out. You then wander off into the unknown, having successfully escaped from this underground prison and having freed everybody else from the same torment. It's a simple concept for a game and it works pretty well, I'll be honest. I also really like the symbolism of everything being dark and dank until you come along, open the roof, and then the light frees everybody. It's just a nice dichotomy of light and darkness, being trapped and being free. It's, it's nice, it's a good touch. But going back to the basic gameplay loop, there are also occasional chase sequences where you'll be running away from strange alien looking creatures that, for the record, reminded me of those monsters in the original Red Faction game and also in the Half-Life games, their weird sock puppet looking alien things. It's never really explained uh, in a ton of detail, at least through most of the main quest of Stray, though you can find documents and clues if you navigate the rest of the levels very carefully that provide some more exposition as to where these things come from, why they are so terrified of light and explode on impact with UV light specifically. So it's there if you're looking for it. Later on in Stray's main campaign, your primary enemy will be these sentinels, which are just floating flying robots that were originally tasked with protecting the human inhabitants of this underground city, but have since had their instructions complicated and confused to the point now where they are so concerned with protecting those around them that they have effectively enacted authoritarian control on all of the citizens of this underground city. Now, all of this is really interesting and the world building is really high quality, but there are some problems. The fatal flaw in Stray is that everything you do is mindless. You see, there's no dedicated jump button in the game, meaning that you can't ever just press X and have the cat jump. 
you can only jump up on ledges and objects that the developers have specifically ordained. You won't ever leap off of a rooftop to the ground below. You will never slip off of a ledge except in a couple of scripted sequences where you have to fall for story reasons. And you'll almost never jump anywhere you don't want to jump to. In one way, this is a positive thing. The controls and jumping mechanics are robust and tight enough that you rarely run into the Assassin's Creed curse of leaping off ledges at the precise moment you didn't want to. And more generally, it's just a testament to how well the development team crafted the movement controls for the game. It's not easy to make a cat move and navigate a world like this in an interesting and fun way. They managed to pull it off. But it's not all sunshine and roses because with every streamlining of a game system, there's the potential for oversimplification to the point where players' experiences will suffer. And what I mean is that this simplification and streamlining of climbing and platforming as a cat in this game really removes almost all of the stakes from exploration. In other words, there's no risk involved. There's no careful consideration of where to go to next or which route you should take. You simply point the left stick in the direction that you want to go and repeatedly jump until you get up to where you're going. And this is compounded even worse by the fact that you can hold down the X button on PlayStation or A on an Xbox controller if you're playing on PC to automatically jump whenever a ledge is nearby that can be reached. Seriously, for the majority of the game when you are navigating levels, you'll just hold down the right trigger to sprint and point the left stick in the rough direction of where you need to go, all while holding down the A button to automatically jump up and down to your desired destination. It's the same reason I've criticized recent Assassin's Creed games, because they oversimplified their traversal and navigation systems as well, to the point where you don't even have to think about it. It's just hold down A, run up wall, run down wall. Granted, not every single game needs to be a hyper-robust platformer, but it would be nice to be put in a position where we have to consider our movement even a little. I mean, we're playing as a cat, a creature that's extremely agile and graceful. A little more variability in the movement would be a tremendous help. It wouldn't need to be anything crazy, something as simple as a dedicated jump button where you can hold it down for a shorter period of time to jump a short distance, or a long press for a long jump. And then you could also have a system where if you fall short of a jump, you could grab the ledge with your claws by pulling down both of the triggers at the moment that you reach the ledge that you're trying to jump to. And then the game could force you to press repeatedly the right and left triggers to climb your way back up, clawing each inch of the way. Which of course is already in the game, because you scratch carpets and rugs like this, which is a fun feline activity, but it's something that's never really explored as an actual game mechanic. There's one or two instances, especially within the side quests, if you can even call them that, we'll get to that in a second, where you use this pulling movement to like pull boxes out and pull ledges and objects down from shelves and get access to them that way but it's not commonly used and i think they could use the same system within navigation and traversal to make that much more interesting and since that navigation and exploration is the overwhelming majority of the game it only makes sense that they would put more variability, experimentation, and activities and complexities into that system to keep it interesting. I mean, the game is only three and a half to five hours, and by the end of it, you'll be pretty fed up with the movement because it's so simplistic. There's just not a lot of meat on the bone. Now, there are a few moments in Stray when you will be challenged by way of navigation, specifically when you need to navigate around these Sentinel enemies. But since they have very clearly outlined fields of view, you can still just sprint around them in most instances. They don't seem to have any noise detection or peripheral vision either, so you can go right up to the edge of their outlined view box and sit comfortably. And this personally always distracted me more than it should have. And I think it's probably because it really fights the immersion that I was feeling everywhere else in the game. The world is so well crafted, the graphics pretty solid, and the ambiance and music are tremendously well done. So much so that to hit these moments where I can knock things over, make a loud sound, or get right up next to a robot guardian without it noticing, just tore me out of the immersion I was feeling. Once again, it's probably a compliment to the game that everything else was so well put together 
that something as simple as a guardian robot not being as aware as I think it should have been was enough to tear me out of the game, but it doesn't change the fact that it still tore me out of the game and made me feel as though something had gone wrong. And as we've said before in critiques for other games, if the player feels like something isn't working properly, it means that something isn't working properly. I know that sounds overly simple, but it is effectively to say that if a player thinks that something is a bug or an issue or a design flaw, there is a problem because even if it wasn't a bug, but was rather intentional on the part of the developers, the player is still going to leave that experience with a negative takeaway that something happened, which wasn't supposed to I'll put together, but going back to the movement. The other times when this actually feels pretty good would be when you start a chase sequence and are running for your life from these hordes of sock puppet enemies. Likely the player will be so focused on escaping the horde that they will overlook the fact that they are simply running down the hallway and climbing along a very specific path. And let me be clear, I'm a fan of Naughty Dog games and linear adventure games like Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, so it should come as no surprise that I really don't mind these sequences. In fact, often these linear moments in the game allow for a higher level of fidelity and polish that the rest of the game doesn't get to enjoy. And later in the game, you'll get access to a UV light that you can use in these sequences that allow you to fight back against these little sock puppet enemies. You can shine it on them, it blows them up, and you can carry on with your adventure. It's unfortunate that that UV light isn't used very much. It's used for about five to 10 minutes of gameplay and then not really touched on <laughs> ever again. It's a little weird, but I guess that's to be expected in a game that's only three and a half hours long. The point of all of this is just to say that these linear sequences really can benefit from careful layouts and precise timings that trick the player into thinking that things are other than the way they actually are. In other words, these linear moments are when Stray, I think, is at its most refined and at its best. It's the open sequences where Stray's problems start to really rear their ugly head. Now, as for open sections in Stray, there are two main ones that we could bring up and discuss. The first one is by far the largest and has the most content contained within, so we're going to focus on that one. In this section, you'll be exploring this small neighborhood, speaking to NPCs and completing various side quests. Again, if you can even call them that, because they're usually comprised of delivering items that you've already found out while exploring, which results in the side quests feeling much more like you're cleaning out your trunk of garbage that you never really wanted in the first place. These also heavily blend with the main campaign because some of the side quests are indistinguishable from what you'll be doing in the main quest, which is perhaps again a compliment, but it doesn't change the fact that many of the tasks you're given for the main quest are just as menial as everything else you do on the side. For example, you are tasked with getting an NPC that's helping you get past a checkpoint to move on in the story, a coat and a construction worker's helmet. And once they have that on, they'll be able to put you in a box and carry you through the checkpoint without raising any suspicions. Makes sense, super simple. Go find a construction worker's outfit and a helmet. And it ends up being pretty simple. You find a cassette tape, you put it in a jukebox sort of stereo thing that's in the back of the clothes shop that's local. You start playing the music, the store clerk wanders back there to figure out what's going on and that leaves the front of the store unattended to. So you're able to go in, take the items, and then run them back to the NPC, and then they're able to help you pass the checkpoint. I appreciate that they don't hold your hand. Instead, they just say, go find a construction worker's outfit and a helmet, and then it's up to you to figure that out. And it doesn't take many brain cells to rub together to figure out, oh, maybe in that clothes store there will be something. Let me look over there. But because even in the open levels, there's only so many places for you to look for things, especially like this that are very specifically described, it doesn't ever really feel like a challenge. Again, it's pretty mindless. By this point that you're tasked with finding these construction clothes, you already know this open area very, very well. So you're just going to wander over, grab the item where you would expect it to be. In this case, it's in the second large area and then move on. Once again, it's sort of a compliment to the game that they built these little levels and, and neighborhoods in such a way that you remember each of the locations very easily. And so when you're tasked with finding something, you can recall that object or that location, figure, oh, I should go there and check that out. And right then and there, you can go and find it. Such as in the second large area, when eventually you are told that you need to go to the local nightclub to find your contact so that you can move on and finish out the rest of the game. By that point, you've already explored this neighborhood enough 
to know where that nightclub is. So it's not that hard to find it. So it's a testament to the design of the neighborhood that you remember where it is and it was unique enough that you made a little mental note without even realizing that you did that. But it's also so small and there's so little challenge to it that it just comes off as, again, kind of mindless. And if mindless is too harsh a term, easy. There's no real challenge. And even if you don't know where the nightclub is, the second you go out and start looking for it in the neighborhood, you'll see that it's just off of the little town square and there's pounding music. There will be a group of NPCs that's spawned to create a line out the door who want to get in. And so they just signal all over the place, hey, it's over here, it's over here come jump in the window. And time and time again, whenever we have something to say negative about Stray, it ties in with a positive, and it's gonna be up to you as to whether or not the negative outweighs the positive or vice versa. For me, the negatives are pretty heavy, and the positives are pretty heavy too, but the difference is, the negatives are all tied up in gameplay and actually enjoying the game yourself, holding the controller in your hand, whereas the positives can all be enjoyed through a Let's Play, a Twitch stream, YouTube videos, whatever. You don't actually need to play the game to enjoy its best parts. For example, one of the best parts of the game and the most memorable for me were when I was just taking in the sights and sounds. My favorite moment in the whole game was when I collected some music sheets in the first large open area and brought them to a local musician who was sitting on the side of this little alleyway. You give the musician the sheet music and she starts playing the song. And I just curled up in a ball right here and started sleeping while I took in the music. And bizarrely enough, this was the highlight of the game for me. This is the image I have ingrained in my mind when I think of Stray. This is the first moment. It's not a cool gameplay sequence, not a boss fight, not a puzzle that I was super proud to solve, but a moment where I'm literally curled up in a ball, purring and sleeping while some music plays. And it makes sense because this is what Stray does the best. The world building, the ambiance, the music and sound design, all of that is tremendous. It's the gameplay and exploration where the game starts to falter. Really, the developers deserve a pat on the back for this. It's wildly impressive that they can make you fall in love with the world and sympathize with characters by means of a protagonist that literally never speaks because they're a cat. I think that's why I'm really conflicted when it comes to Stray. The world that's been crafted here is really interesting and it's even compelling. It feels worth saving, even though you personally have no cat in the race. And the various NPCs you'll meet all have their own unique personalities, attitudes, and are memorable in their own right. But even with all of that, the gameplay is so lacking and at times even boring that I think most players will simply be better served watching somebody else play through the game on Twitch or on YouTube. As terrible as it is to say, while playing Stray, there were multiple times when I felt as though I would be having more fun if I were simply playing Factorio or Apex and watching somebody else play through Stray on Twitch, because the few moments of quiet ambiance and respite that were compelling enough to continue were drowned out by all of the other filler and mindless tedium. It's one thing to assign a series of collections to a player that pad out gameplay time, which I think many of the side quests in Stray fall victim to this tendency for the record, but it's a whole other animal to assign a tedious task that is also boring and requires little to no effort, such as finding eight randomly placed music sheets around the first open level. Finding these sheets is not difficult. It doesn't require any skill. You literally just have to have stumbled upon the right area and you need to have been observant enough to see the large button prompt or to see the object in the distance so that you can seek it out and do whatever is needed to retrieve it. Now, thankfully, most of the busy work quests in Stray are optional, but I think that also betrays the problem at the core of the game, which is that most players are going to mindlessly blast through the game in the span of about three and a half hours, having never been truly challenged in the gameplay, nor encouraged or incentivized to replay it. Truly, there is no real replay value in Stray, like at all. Once you've solved a couple of basic puzzles and figured out where you need to collect certain story items to progress, replaying just feels like a total waste of time. It will be 
more tedious than the first time around, which was already tedious. And as always, the consideration will be different for everybody, but for me, I simply don't think it's worth 30 bucks to spend three and a half hours mindlessly smashing buttons no matter how cute the cat is. It's the last time I'll say it. I see almost no reason to play this game when watching the game achieves the same end. Now I know, I know what some people are going to say in, in the comments section, so let me preclude those pedantic comments before they even come out. They will say in a furiously typed comment, even after this, Dear Luke, you recently said that you like As Dusk Falls, which is effectively a visual novel. How can you recommend that game, but not this one, if they both can be enjoyed passively by watching them? Sincerely yours, YouTube Commenter. Now to me, the answer to this question is actually quite simple. Game Pass. You see, As Dusk Falls is included in Game Pass. So if you already have Game Pass, it's free to play. And furthermore, that game has a very broad and branching narrative. Your choices can have a huge impact on the characters and which of them live, die, end up on death row, or spend life in prison. In addition, there's a huge amount of replay value in As Dusk Falls because all of the different options you take have different branching consequences. And they even include a decision tree like in Detroit Become Human, where after each chapter of the main story, you can see which choices you made and which choices you didn't. So in a subsequent playthrough of the game, you can actually jump to specific story beats and try different options to see how the story alters and changes. Tons of replay value, something that you would personally benefit from engaging with and experimenting with if you were to play the game versus just watching somebody else play it on stream one time through. And once again, it's in Game Pass, so anybody who wants to play it can enjoy it without putting any additional cash up. Which, to be clear, is the same caveat I'm laying against Stray. If you can enjoy this game through PlayStation Plus for free, I think it's worth playing on a Friday afternoon. I, I, I don't see a problem there. It, you're not putting up cash? That's fine. It's when they charge you 30 bucks for the game on Steam that I personally think they're really stretching the worth of the game. I just don't see it being worth a full 30 bucks at that point. And I wasn't going to say this or bring this up um, because I just didn't think it would it would matter. But somebody on stream the other day actually mentioned this in chat. So I figured I should just address it outright. No, I'm not a dog person. <laughs> That's not why I have problems with Stray. I, I like a lot of Stray. I have two cats, Finley and Hermione, um, that I love dearly. And you've seen them if you hang out with us on stream. They come in here every once in a while and uh, we hang out with them. I love those cats. I'm a cat person myself. I love cats dearly. But for me, just the fact that we play as a cat in Stray isn't enough uh, to garner brownie points to bring this game across the finish line. It, it just doesn't do it for me, though for some people I'm sure it does. So once again, just because you personally like cats so much that you're willing to spend 30 bucks to enjoy the game just where you can play as one, that's totally fine. If you're willing to give bonus points for Kitty Go Purr, that's totally cool. But I like Meow Meows just as much as the next guy. I'm not willing to give the game the benefit of the doubt so much that uh, I'm willing to overlook all of these faults just because it has a, a feline friend in the helm. I, I just personally am not willing to do that. You might have a different opinion. It's up to you. All of this to say, Stray is not a bad game. It's just a game that I don't think is good enough with the amount of content that it has and the lack of replay value that it has, or rather doesn't have, to garner 30 bucks for those playing it on PC. If you can play it on PlayStation, go for it. I think you'll have a great time. But that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, if you want to come hang out with us on stream, come by. I'll be live right as this video goes up. So pop into chat, say hi. I just saw the stray video and I'd love to see you. It'd be cool. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, share it with a friend and subscribe with the notification bell rung. I think is is what it's called. You ring the bell so that you get notified of all of the new videos that go up on Mondays and Fridays. Thank you for watching. I love you all more than you can possibly know. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.